Hello. In this video, we are going to take a look at how uh, differential amplifier stages can be cascaded together to create a multi-stage amplifier. Uh, this was similar to what we saw with the single transistor amplifiers, common emitter, common collector, common base, where we could uh, cascade them together to create a multi-stage amplifier. Uh, in this case, I have cascaded two uh, BJT differential amplifiers, and then I've added um, uh, a DC level shifter at the output stage, uh, together with a, um, a common collector amplifier or emitter follower. Uh, it's important to notice as well that you know you don't need to cascade only multi-stage amplifiers. You could cascade a multi-stage amplifier uh, or a differential amplifier, excuse me, with a common emitter amplifier to create a multi-stage amplifier. Um, and then it is important that we start to get used to recognize the circuit building blocks um, and be able to differentiate the different stages and also to be able to do quick calculations. Um, in the end, we are going to be able to perform simulations. And so that's going to allow us to fine tune our calculations or you know get uh, more accurate calculations. But it's always important to have an order of magnitude as well as when you're designing, you want to have um, you want to have a starting point that then you can uh, go ahead and tweak in your simulation. So if you have a starting point for your different component values, then the simulation is going to be a lot easier to fine tune those as needed. Um, so let's just take a quick look at the circuit. We have um, R, uh, which is the reference resistor for my current mirror. Uh, a reference current gets created through QA, which should be a diode connected transistor. Um, and then that gets mirrored uh, on the other uh, transistors, QB, QC, QD, QE. All of those are going to be uh, part of the current mirror and they're there for biasing purposes. They're biasing the different stages of the amplifier. Then we have our input stage, uh, which is a differential amplifier formed by Q1 and Q2. Uh, to make things simpler, I have connected collector resistors. And notice that this is a balanced uh, differential amplifier because we are taking our output out of that stage differentially. We're feeding it into a second differential amplifier formed by transistors Q3 and Q4. They are biased uh, by transistor QD. They also have uh, two collector resistors connected, RC3 and RC4. And then the output is taken single-endedly uh, into the base of Q5, uh, which is configured as an emitter follower, because the output of Q5 input is applied at the base of the transistor, the output is taken out of the uh, emitter. But notice uh, there is an RE resistor there, which is basically providing a level shifter, uh, meaning the, the purpose of that resistor is to uh, bring the output voltage the DC component of the output voltage down to zero volts. Um, so, in essence, so that we don't need a coupling capacitor at the output. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a, a couple of quick calculations. Um, let's say, for example, we know we have a reference current in the circuit. Let's go ahead and calculate what my reference current would be. This is my IRF. which is going to be voltage across our resistor R divided by the resistance, or in this case VCC minus, minus VEE plus 0.7, that would be the voltage of the collector of transistor QA, divided by R. And so it's going to be 10 minus minus 10 plus 0.7 divided by 16K, which is 1.2 milliamps. So we're going to have uh, 1.2 milliamps roughly flowing through transistor QA, ignoring uh, the base currents. Uh, that means I'm going to have also 1.2 milliamps flowing through QB as well as QC. And notice how QB and QC have been uh, connected in parallel uh, because we want the current through each one of those branches Q1 and Q2 to be equal to 1.2 milliamps. This is equivalent to having a current mirror 
a single tail current mirror providing 2.4 milliamps. And so it's been represented like this. It could have been represented as a single transistor um, with twice the, the base emitter uh, junction area, as opposed to QB and QC. But this is another valid way of representing it. So that means we're going to have 1.2 milliamps for each one of those branches. There's 1.2 milliamps flowing through uh, QD, and that means that I'm going to have half of that, or 0.6 milliamps going through each one of the branches for the second DFAM and finally 1.2 milliamps going through my output branch. Um, if I wanted to calculate the gain of the overall circuit, I will have to calculate, so total gain is going to be equal to A1 times A2 where uh, whenever I have a multi-stage amplifier, I'm going to have to account for loading factors. Um, the, the gain of, uh, of A1 is going to be uh, negative RC over little r e, RC1 I should say, over little r e1, because uh, we have a balanced output. Um, and A2, since it's a single-ended output, it's going to be uh, half of that. So RC4 divided by um, 2 times little r4. And again, this is without accounting for any loading factors. You know, in reality, um, if you wanted to calculate the effective gain, uh, you will need to account for the fact that uh, you not only have RC1 connected to the collector of Q1, but that is in parallel with the input persistence looking into the input of transistor Q3. So you will include that into your equation, um, and so forth. Uh, but this will be, you know, the nominal value I'm going to write here, nominal. And then, um, what else? Notice that um, the value of RE, it's going to need to be determined based on, you know, it's going to be whatever value I need to have to make my V out equal to zero. So, um, Q5 and RE provide a DC level shifter to bring the DC value of V out to zero volts. Uh, now the voltage at the base of Q5 is going to be equal to VCC minus the voltage drop across RC4. Um, and then the voltage at the emitter of Q5 is going to be that minus uh, 0.7 volts. So we can say, you know, VE voltage at the emitter of Q5, VE5, it's going to be equal to VCC minus um, 0.6 milli times 2.7K minus 0.7 volts, which is equal to um, 7.7 volts. And therefore, if I want my V out um, to be set to zero, I'm going to have my resistor RE. I will want to make it equal to um, VE5 minus V out divided by 1.2 milliamps. So it will be 7.7 .7 minus zero divided by 1.2 milli which is equal to uh, 6.4 kilo ohms. So that's how we will calculate the value of that resistor. Um, and this is just one example, but again, it's a, it's a good exercise to go and look at uh, different multi-stage amplifiers. Uh, the data sheet of op-amps may provide a, a good source to look at some of these simplified schematics. 
I'm just trying to be able to identify the different blocks um, and the function that they are performing. You know, which ones are current mirrors that are being used for biasing, which ones are differential amplifiers, which ones are active loads, perhaps um, gain stages, maybe a common emitter amplifier, maybe a common collector at the output, etc. Thank you.